so... Oh, no, if we talk about the Switch, that's, that's coming up. Right? Be off. <laughs> okay, so anything uh, from your waist down can't be seen. Uh, don't lean forward. Um, because... Uh, it's you, where I am now, okay? Yeah, like where you are right now, and if you sit straight up, those are both fine. But if you lean forward, then it starts to pull out on the view. Okay. Um, we'll have a better setup in Orlando but for now, and then whatever we'll do, we'll have to deal. Um, oh, do you think I should grab my glasses? Yeah, I'll do it without. I don't need okay. to see. All right, who's going to intro this? You're going to intro this? Let's go through a to? couple intros, and then um, we'll. Uh, you know, we're just, I mean, this is all checking. This is all live. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll start with an intro and then you can do one. Yeah. All right. Hey, YouTube. What's up? This is Two Banditos here. I'm uh, your host, John. This is my co-host, Joshua. And today we're going to uh, discuss a number of topics. First, we're going to start off with a... Uh, more serious topic, I guess. How much does the news suck? <laughs> um, seriously, news websites, news channels, so negative, so polarized. What's up with that? So, there's intro one. <laughs> <laughs> I need a chocolate. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. And it just, it's like, it's like we're the village people all over. Is that mic a little? No, it's not bent. It's just an optical illusion. So we'll have to do some. Yeah, your mic curves a little to the left. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what a lot of told your boys. <laughs> <laughs> Stand straight up and curves a little to the left. <laughs> <laughs> that's natural. Oh. Um, <sighs> hey, this is the Two Banditos. You've got John and Josh here to talk a little bit about some of the things on the topics. Uh, first on the board. Nice. There we go. Done. So, um, so we've got a couple intros. Um, so let's see. Um, I guess we'll just take turns introducing topics. Um, right. Topic number one, news. How much does it suck? <laughs> um, seriously, though, news sites, news channels, all feeding into people's bias, making them more polarized to the left or the right. Uh, and it's especially been bad this year with the presidential election. What do you think? So, I mean, I, I, I'm going to have to, like, for the first time ever, uh, this is a bad way to start off a talk show. I'm uh, going to mislead a lot of people, but for the first time ever, I'm going to have to agree with you. <laughs> um, you know, the, the problem is... is well, it's that hard to argue against, really. <laughs> Well, the, the problem is, is that you see more and more polarization. Um, you know, the, the problem is, is that um, Trump has said, and he's done a lot of things that he should be vilified for. Um, however, whenever you kind of go into this, hype, you know, hyperbole mode, where everything is ex over-exaggerated, it stops taking the, the, the spotlight on on what it should be and and kind of takes the focus off so like for example you know they had the the that terrible tragedy in turkey you know 39 people either injured or killed um absolutely terrible um something that that should have been at the top of the news items and um even though i'm a little bit more of a conservative bent i i typically use cnn as my main news source and the night it was happening i had to go like six or seven items down on the main page to even get to read about this terrible tragedy because um, there's no more there's no more like conservative middle or there's no more liberal middle uh, as far as the media is concerned Fox News is as crazy right as it's always been um, and then MSNBC is MSNBC yeah <laughs> um, Ooh. You know, and, and so, uh, you know, it, it's really discouraging because then you start seeing more and more kind of drifting, you know? Well, yeah, 
Um, the turkey thing I can kind of understand because uh, it's national news. Oh, I get it's it. not. So if, it, if it doesn't happen here, it doesn't matter. Well, it you. won't be as high <laughs> on uh, U.S. news sites. Um, but something that should have been as high on U.S. news sites was the kidnapping of a mentally challenged boy oh. by four teenagers. And that was also buried under a lot of Trump headlines. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. That was that was um you know, that was that was pretty disgusting as far as that goes. Um, you know, it's it was obviously a hate crime. Um it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what color your skin is. Uh I I firmly believe that it owed a certain amount of dignity and um you know in the same way that if it had been you know uh four white kids abducting uh a hispanic or you know an african-american kid I, I would have been horrified and i was just as horrified in this case and and you're right i mean i remember uh hearing about it and going to cnn and i had to go you know a couple headlines down um you know the fact is is that you can only report fresh coverage on on the same Trump story so often. I mean, you know, there, there's been some good reporting, and I'll put some links in in the the video on this, on some that I've seen. But it's frustrating because there are legitimate things that Trump does that should get negative coverage, and then he says something on Twitter, and everybody goes and looks at his Twitter post. And then genuine news is getting left behind. And, you know, you'd think uh, media wouldn't fall for it, but they do every time. Yeah. Um, and not to mention uh, confirmation bias is a big thing right now. Oh, yeah. I think with uh, websites and news channels. And uh, people go to where they're going to hear what they want to hear. And especially with uh, Trump's news conference the other day, mm -hmm. um, you go to a place like Gawker, mm -hmm. and they point out everything that he said in a negative light, no matter what it was, mm -hmm. basically making fun of him for everything. Uh, but you go to a place like Fox News, and it's trumpeting everything he did as, as fantastic, as earth-changing is just the best thing ever and that kind of does a disservice to people i think because nobody's really getting a fair view of what he said oh yeah well you know i i think that that sensationalism is definitely taken taking the front seat and that analysis has really kind of gone back um you know, it's really telling because I had the opportunity to watch the the press conference that recently happened, um, and it was me and and two colleagues of mine, um, one a a a vow Democrat who you know contributes very much, and one a little bit more on the conservative, but an independent. And it was interesting because we all came away from it thinking, you know, there were some high points and there were some low points. Um, the thing is, is that. I'm trying cautiously to take a wait and see approach. I feel like there are some things I'm genuinely worried about that we need to, you know, everybody, not just the media, but everybody needs to kind of, you know, make sure we keep an eye on and uh, stand up for if things go that way. But at the same time, um, I, I don't think that we should be saying, okay, well, this is already a failure. Um, there are certain things that are happening that I think are positive. I mean, uh, the markets are reacting very strongly. Um, well, the Trump tweets about certain companies. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's funny because, um, and I know offline, off the video, we've, we've talked a little bit about this, and you said, well, don't think about it from a business perspective. From a business perspective, and as a businessman, I feel like Trump's going to be very good for my business. As a human being, That's very I'm, fair. I'm and a father, I'm worried that my children are going to live in some Blade Runner future where they have to run for a mask. I thought you liked Blade Runner, though. 
I, I do. There's a small part of me that's like, well, man, if it gets me a Harrison Ford into a, like, you know, a, a new Blade Runner flick, that, like, well, enters Harrison somehow. Ford's already in a new Blade no, Runner No, but, like, flick. young Harrison Ford. We've got to just, like, you know, I would trade the environment for Manny Jean to take Sean Connery and Harrison Ford, roll them back a little bit, um, you know, and, and yeah. just six, seven. Why can't Sean Connery be in a Blade Runner film? I that would be a very I haven't seen Sean Connery lately. Does he look like he's looked since he was like forty? Yeah, he he's just cloned. I mean, it's it's it somewhere between his abusive nature and his alcoholism. He's mummified into the Connery. <laughs> the alcohol has preserved him. Okay. Yeah. Um, All right. Uh, but got a little off topic here. Yeah, but that's that's the, that's the beauty of it. But to be honest, though, I I I just feel like um, you know, not to harp on it, but I feel like we're, um, you know, genuinely looking at a period where there are some positive things that are coming about. There are some things I actually do agree with. Um, you know, uh, whenever during the campaign, I, I actually I don't mind telling anyone this. I voted for Hillary, um, but during the campaign, whenever, um, uh, whenever Trump, I, I can't remember exactly what he said, so I'm sure in the comments I'm gonna get hated or since um, this is a new video yeah. maybe future commenters will come back and hate me but honestly everybody Donald Trump says so much inflammatory stuff it's difficult to keep up with exactly what he said on any given day well what the one thing I like what he said was he was like look you know at Trump Tower I don't care if you're a man or, or a woman or uh, you're a transgender you can come and use whatever bathroom you want and um, like the reason why I was afraid of Trump before going into a polling booth was because I feel like he was willing to say anything it took to get elected. And I I think a lot of people realize that. And so I'm cautiously optimistic now that he's been elected because I'm like, well, maybe he won't be terrible. Maybe he'll just be some carnival barker who just like, I don't know, gets steered the right direction by somebody else. Um, but I was genuinely afraid of I, I don't think anybody knows really what he truly believes. Um, but, like, when he said that, I was like, well, maybe it won't be so bad. Um, you know, I'm very pleased that, obviously, um, like, the, the Muslim registration, like, has been completely walked back now because that was an insane, terrible idea. Yeah, that was um, just... Um, you know, I, I do want to say this, though. Um, I hear a lot about, like, the alt-right. Um, I, I like to pride myself on being fairly moderate. I feel like there's the right extreme and the left extreme, and they're both equally as scary, and they're both equally as active in this country. You've got a 10% and a 10%, or even a 15 and a 15 on either side, that scares the shit out of me, because this one's trying to kill you, even though they're trying to say that you can't kill your baby or whatever, and then this one's trying to kill you because of Mother Earth or something, or I don't know, but at the end of the day... Um, Wait, let's see. 15% and 15%. That's 30%. That's about exactly who voted in this election. Yeah, that's about what <laughs> um, We're to the point where only the extremists are voting, and that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, that's how this happened. That's how uh, Trump became uh, Trump. Obviously, we need to be more engaged next time. Maybe we need to be more engaged in our political party's primaries? It, it's funny because, with, so I'm a Republican. I voted for Hillary, but I'm a Republican. I actually voted for Obama, too, ironically. <laughs> um, so maybe I'm like a terrible Republican. Uh, <laughs> You're a rhino. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Well, I mean, honestly, like, uh, his uh, hoping change, like, you can call me naive, but, like, I, I was genuinely touched by that message, and I was like, you know what? I, I uh, can get behind that. And so, you know, I voted for Obama, and then... Um, you know, uh, this cycle came through, and then, uh, you know, all my favorite people. I was like, you know, Jeb did some okay things in Florida. I'd be okay with Jeb. Rubio, you know, he's young. I don't think he's going to be I like Marco Rubio. Part. Yeah, but, you know, I think he has a compelling story. Um, I love that he had outreach to, like, the Hispanic community, because honestly, as a Republican, <laughs> as a Republican from Texas, you know, I, I was, and I'll say, I, I feel like I was blessed because I grew up in a family where, um, like, I knew racism happened, but, like, I didn't hear, like, terrible jokes inside my family. Yeah. I didn't have that exposure. And so, 
Um, you know, like as a Republican, I, I, you know, especially when I was younger, I'd say, you know, they have strong family values. Uh, it's a hardworking community. Um, they believe in the American dream. I mean, that's hell. That's why we they fought to get here. Um, and I was like, you know, why are we trying to keep them out? I mean, immigrants are what makes this country great. And all we're doing is pissing off a huge block of people who I feel like would naturally uh, lean conservative if given the opportunity. And so Marco came around, and I was like, yeah, immigration reform. Don't tell everybody they're bad people just because they want to be an American. Yeah, poor Marco Rubio. The immigration reform shot him in the foot. Yeah, um, it's, you know, and it's, it's terrible because um, I feel like the – the super progressives, I don't know. I feel like I need a, a more damaging name than that because I really don't like them. But like the cre- the the people who, you know, you listen to ninety percent of their speech and they're like, okay, yeah, you kind of got some good liberal ideas, and then like you hear that one thing and it's like, whoa, let's not let's not go that far. Um, you know, I feel like they have a lot of power inside the Democratic Party and their base and who they actually get up there. And I feel like the Republicans. Uh, Tea Partiers, unfortunately, have a lot of power with the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's no longer the party of Lincoln. Um, it's yeah. no longer the party of progress and industrialization and, uh, you know, um, you know, the. Yeah. I mean, there was a period where Republicans championed the environment, well, sadly, and, and that's no longer an I issue. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess Marco Rubio is living proof that. While not all Republicans are old, angry white guys, there are enough of them still left that it <laughs> makes a difference. Um, you know, but uh, um, Rubio, I was like, okay, I can do Rubio, or I can do Jindal, or uh, and or I can do all these people. Yeah, Bob Jindal was, was yeah. good. I like Bob Jindal. Um, I, I was like, you know, uh, hell, I like Huckabee before we drink too much Kool Aid at Fox News. I, I don't know. Huckabee was always kind of a little too far out there for me. Ah, uh, the first time he ran, I was a lot better than the second time. I was like, whoa, you hung out in the wrong water cooler at Fox. Yeah, Huckabee always kind of uh, reminded me of, like, John McCain after he lost the presidential election, how he had to go really conservative. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just all like, why? Why, John? Uh-huh. You you were that middle of the road Republican who reached across the aisle. Now you're just like any other Republican. Yeah, trying to find the aisle. Uh-huh. Um, I'm sure there's a, a joke there that I don't want to make. You know, because I want to be respectful <laughs> to a person I actually do have respect for. Um, uh, but you know, it's 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 a crazy uh crazy time we find ourselves in. It's yeah. It's um. And we've had. Uh, Kind of speaking of trying to find something, we've wondered off topic. Well, um, so let's try and find our way back to our original topic, which was the bias in the news. Um, well, I thought I thought our original topic was uh, ex- extreme viewpoints in the news. I thought it was. Never mind. Doesn't it, matter because. Doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to do a little course correction here. Okay. Um, and we're going to go back to Donald Trump. Shockingly. Okay. Um, yes, and and something else Trump. I read on the internet. Again, shockingly. Yeah. Um, well, at least we know it's true. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Lord, yes. And, and better yet, my source is Gawker. Oh, God. So, you know this is straight from him to us. Well, that thing. Gawker doesn't exist anymore, thank you. Um, well, Gizmodo, I guess, uh, would be what it is. I, I'd like to jump in there um, real quick, by the way. I don't know. I don't care how many people I piss off with this. If you are an organization that, for a cheap headline, outs a man who didn't feel comfortable being outed before, and then said man has a vendetta against you, don't be surprised or act like you're a complete victim. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, Gawker got exactly what it deserved, but that's that could be a whole nother a whole nother conversation. And then um, saved by Univision. 
of and, all people. And it's funny because I was like, yay, Gawker is dead. Um, and then, like, unfortunately, there was a diaspora of some, like, least favorite riders on the community and it went and infected their other communities. Yeah. And so you went from a very kind of independent bent on most of their blogs to now. Um, oh, yeah, super liberal. Well, I mean, um, I mean, some things are just crazy, like, uh, like the on um, was it Kotaku had the uh the whole hissy fit over the Moana costumes, and it's like oh well because it's because <laughs> it wasn't flesh tone or whatever, and, and it's like I actually yeah. felt bad because um uh I have a friend I won't mention his name I'll say CN uh had a, a a granddaughter who was like interested in being able to dress up yeah. as a certain character and. Now that's not an option. It it was the Maui costume they had a lot of problems with, with all the tattoos and stuff. And uh, my whole thing is, you know, a kid that's going to want that costume isn't going to understand cultural appropriation. He's not going to understand why it's, what's the difference between black and white or uh, Hispanic and white or, or what have you. He's just going to know that for some reason... He can't be a character that he really likes. And I think that's kind of messed up. I don't think, you see, and here's the thing, that's not appropriation. Appropriation would be saying, okay, that's a cool character, we're going to now make him a white guy. I mean, I, I felt well, like it. Well, not really. It, it is kind of like wearing the character's skin. Well, and literally. It, but, I mean, I thought, I, honestly, I felt like the movie did a good job of embracing and, and showcasing that culture and and um and honestly um something that you know i, I kind of like to go on one of my little wikipedia digs where i kind of rabbit trail across the internet but i mean about. that's the thing uh traditionally disney movies have been about european fantasy right yeah and as a result it's gotten a lot of kids interested in european fantasy yeah uh now disney's branching out they're uh, going to other mythologies. Yeah. And maybe if you allow your kids to uh, put themselves in that culture, it would get them more interested in that culture. Yeah. And is that what we want, to be more culturally aware? Um, we want that. Some people just want headlines. Uh, some people just want to be angry about stuff. Uh, I, I think so. I think that there's like... I think that genuinely 90% of people have like a common sense meter, and they say, okay, but this is how it was intended. And then some people are, wake up in the morning wanting to be offended. And I'm saying this both on the left and the right. There are some people who it would tick me off because they would wake up in the morning, and they'd be like, oh, well, thanks, Obama. And it's like, and, and it's like. To be the, fair, that was one of the greatest memes of the last eight years. Yeah, it had a mean value, but it it, it was frustrating because it's like um, he did make progress in a lot of areas. Um, the economy, you know, he he was able to shepherd it through some tough times. Um, you know, I'm I am a little frustrated that NASA um, uh, kind of went on a bit yeah, towards that whole, climate that science. That whole uh, NASA losing a lot of funding thing is kind of so. So I'm going to stop here because I don't want people to think I don't want to engage in climate science. But um, there is actually a government agency I will happily provide a link to in the comment area. Yeah, yeah. Check the description for the link. Yeah. And that is supposed to study the climate and weather. So, you know, I feel like uh, he just kind of like cannibalized that because I'll admit it. I'm yeah, a nerd. Yeah, yeah, it's like, I feel like, you know, he kind of camelized uh, NASA because it's like, I'm a nerd. Um, I'm devastated that, honestly, I feel like America is starting to fall behind the Chinese on some key milestones. And um, and we're not really doing deep space exploration. Um, you know, the places I lived in, the pla the communities I'm a part of, uh, the Marshall and, and Johnson Space communities. Um, yes, you have these large, far-flung contracts, but you're talking about um, they just tested one of the main 
you know, engine boosters. And it's like, um, having talked to some of the people, and I, hopefully I don't get anybody in trouble with this, but having talked to people who are like the safety engineers and, and some of the actual like flight controllers who work in these projects, um, we're so far away, and a big part of it is funding. I mean, um, I think that really funding should be, when it comes to science, when it comes to climate science, uh, you know, investing in, you know, any kind of like STEM science, biotechnology, I mean, the more the merrier. Um, and so I got a little frustrated, sorry to get off topic, but I did get a little frustrated and asked about the Completely cannibalized. derailed what point I was going to make. I don't, I don't care at this point. Uh, <laughs> I, I talked about my source and then you went off on a tangent. I'll okay, just so, let you go. Let you go. Yeah, just live the dream. Um, um, but that's a talk show, right? Or maybe this is a ramble show. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're tending to do. Uh, anyway, the point that I was going to make a long time ago on a couch far, far, well, no, we're still on it. Yeah, this is. Um, but the point I was trying to make about the Golf Rock article, or Gizmodo, or whatever the hell it is now. Um, thanks, Obama. Um, was that it was saying that Donald Trump had fired the people in charge of our nuclear arsenal, of the Nuclear Regulatory Committee. Oh, yeah. And it told them to clean out their desks, and that they were out of there and didn't have anybody... Uh, to fill the position, he was just gonna leave it empty, and that was the actual article. So, and they issued a correction later on that article saying that, Oh, that's not true. Yeah, he didn't ask them to leave, he just didn't ask them to stay. And it's like, that's a big difference. Well, and it's also, it's a political appointee position, and the NRC, um, having worked with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, just a small amount, I can tell you they're not going anywhere, folks. Um, <laughs> at least not for the next 10 years. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's an offline joke I'm not going to go into. Um, but, so, um, but we have rambled a little bit, uh, but I think this is a good time to kind of close out the first topic. Uh, yeah, well, just a second. Um, oh, okay. I wanted to finish my point, if oh, I could. I thought you'd finished your point. Uh, my point was they added the correction mm -hmm. later, uh, but they didn't publish a new article saying that, oh, wait, no, no, he didn't. Like they do with a lot of articles. Mm -hmm. They'll uh, publish something and they'll, they'll say, oh, wait, no, such and such didn't do this. Uh, on the Trump thing, they just added a correction later that no one would see. Yeah, that's about right, though. Um, so, and it just goes to show you how biased some outlets can be. Oh, yeah. Which was our whole point, I believe. No, actually, I'm pretty sure like we actually checked the cue card. It, it was actually saying uh, uh, that, that there's now ex only extreme viewpoints left in the news. Well, I can't see it. There's something about hooks. Jose Canseco. <laughs> All right, so that's it for our first topic, I believe. Yeah, so we'll we'll hit you up after the jump. So let me make sure it's still recording, okay?